Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us on our video here for our worship service. This is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. And this is the service for June 20th, 2021, which is proper 7 on the 7th, 6. Proper 7. I'm right. Proper 7 on the church calendar. And uh, um, we'll be using, once again, Divine Service Setting 4 from the hymnal uh, and singing a few hymns. We begin with one of those hymns. Since we are together to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Our Old Testament lesson for Proper 7 is from the prophet Job, chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out of the womb? When I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the followers. The snare is broken, and we've escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our epistle lesson from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> Working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labor, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and the, for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, our heart is open wide. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. In return... I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
fourth chapter. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking in the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Die. 
you're more likely to be killed by lightning. Speaking of lightning, are you afraid of thunder? Thunder doesn't hurt anything. Perhaps you're afraid of an IRS audit. Again, not really something to be afraid of. Less than 1% of tax filers are audited. Sometimes it's hard to explain fear. Sometimes it makes no sense. Sometimes we aren't afraid because we don't really understand. One time I was teaching some kids about Paul's shipwreck. It's in Acts chapter 27. Kids aren't really afraid of shipwrecks. They think nothing of being in a boat in a storm, probably because none of them have ever been in that situation. I showed a video of a storm on the ocean with huge waves crashing on the shore, but the fact remains most kids are probably more afraid of the dark than they are of rough seas. Today's gospel is about some disciples who were afraid of being in a boat in a storm. They were fishermen in the days before weather forecasts. They probably had known family and friends who had perished in storms. So when they were out on the Sea of Galilee and a great windstorm arose, they were afraid. As the waves were crashing over the side of the boat, they woke Jesus and asked him, Do you not care that we are perishing? It was a legitimate fear. They were truly in danger and they knew it. If things continued the way they were going, they would indeed perish. But Jesus does care. When sick people came to Jesus, he healed them. When lost people came to Jesus, he taught them. He led them into truth. When sinners came to Jesus, he forgave them. He gave the deaf the gift of hearing and the blind their sight. The mute could speak, the lame could run and jump. When there's a need, Jesus fills it. And that day on the Sea of Galilee, Jesus showed that he cared. He got up from his nap. He looked around and saw the situation, and then he calmed the storm. The problem was averted. The source of their fear was eliminated simply by the sound of his voice. Problem solved. The danger was gone. You would think that the disciples at that point would have calmed down. Everything was good. Jesus was in charge. But the text tells us at that point the disciples were not calm. They were, in fact, filled with great fear. What were they afraid of? Was their fear legitimate or wasn't it? Actually, they were afraid precisely because Jesus had calmed the storm. They were afraid because he was in the boat with them. They asked each other, who is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Who indeed can control the wind and waves with simply a word? The disciples knew Jesus and they loved him, but they were shaken by this display of power. Only the creator controls the weather. Was Jesus God? Yes, he was. And he is. <clears throat> the calming of the storm is one of Jesus' miracles of the old nature. In his miracles of the old nature, Jesus shows himself to be what he's always been, the creator God. God always calms storms. He calms every storm. Usually it involves a period of time in the movements of fronts and high and low pressure systems. The creator controls all the forces of nature. He always has. Jesus controlled that storm without the passage of time, without the usual moving around of weather systems, with a simple phrase from his mouth, peace, be still. The storm was instantly calmed. Jesus possessed creative power. At that moment, the disciples realized that they were face to face with their creator. They saw that he has power even over some of the most powerful forces of nature. And there he was, sitting in the boat with them. They were afraid. Afraid of the unknown, afraid of the awesome power they had seen, afraid because they were sinful men and they were in the presence of God himself. And that's a good thing. 
The book of Proverbs tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you begin to realize that he is God and you aren't, then you begin to be wise. Then you understand the relationship between God and his people. Luther, in his small catechism, reminds us that we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. He is the fearsome creator. But he cares. He cares enough to give his life for us on the cross. He cares enough to come to us in his word. He cares enough to be present with us in his sacrament. His presence, which can be a source of fear, is evidence of the great love that he has for his people. His presence comes from his great love. He cares what happens to you today and in every day to come. He cares about your eternal salvation. He cares about you when you're near a snake or there's thunder or you've been called in for an IRS audit. He cares about you when you're in a storm on a boat. Your fear of God can remind you of his great power, and his power takes care of you. He not only calmed the storm, but he defeated sin and death and the devil for you. His power protects you every day. His power is fearful, but it is very good. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wondrous works to the children of men. You hold power over wind and wave, sin and death. Deliver us from every trouble and distress and bring us at last to our eternal haven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our salvation, you have ushered in the favorable time of time and day of salvation through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Support all your ministers and remove all obstacles from hearing and believing the word they preach. Let your grace be proclaimed through every hardship, struggle, and suffering, and encourage us by the example of many saints to consider ourselves rich and alive, despite every opposition. For since we have Christ, we possess everything. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, open wide the hearts of Christians to one another, especially within the home and between neighbors. Let love be genuine, speech truthful, and patience constant. Let us commend ourselves in everything as those known by God's love and therefore unashamed to serve one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all knowledge, you alone with the Son and the Holy Spirit laid the earth's foundations and set the limits and order our universe. Bless all noble sciences and plumb the depths of your creation. Give students, professors, and researchers joy in their discoveries and humility before your majesty that at all times you may be acknowledged as the true God and judge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you rule this world by your power. Give to your civil servants respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use the authority given them from above, let it be in accord with your good design for our world, and not the corruption of sin, which they are to rebuke for the good of their citizens. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you see that we are perishing, yet you bid us to set our fears aside and trust in you for the sake of Christ, by whose blood we receive peace for our troubled consciences. Do not reject our prayers for their faithfulness, faithlessness, but teach us to trust you wholly. Give your protection and peace to those in special need. We bring them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever else you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. continuing to do these services at least into the foreseeable future because people are still watching them uh, you know eventually I suppose uh, the pandemic will end and and we'll not have a need for these maybe uh, or else maybe we'll just keep doing them we don't know uh, we are having in-person services at nine o'clock Sunday morning you're welcome to come to that and a Bible study on uh, Dr. Barry's uh, What About pamphlets. Uh, it's Sunday evenings at 6 o'clock. Uh, if you are, would like to come to that, uh, you'd be welcome uh, to that as well. May God bless your week.